Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome to the channel if you're new here. Here we have episode 23 of my van build series and in today's video I'm going to be making a control panel to go inside the cupboard um, and it's going to have various switches on this control panel. It's going to have my inverter controller, my MT50 solar charge controller, uh, a lighting dimmer so we can dim the cabin lights. That's good if you want to save a little bit of energy uh, from the batteries. You can dim the lights at night time so you're, they're not on full blast all the time. And I've also got a water level gauge here which I'll be installing in that control panel. So I thought I would make a video showing you how I make this control panel. I'm going to be using my laser cutter for making the panel just so it looks nice and neat. I appreciate everyone doesn't have a laser cutter but it might be interesting to see anyway so I thought I'd make the video just to show you guys if that's something you're interested in. You might be able to invest in one yourself. I first learned about laser cutters at school and then I went on to do 3D design at college and continued using laser cutters there for designing things and then I got my own laser cutter when I left college and started my apprenticeship as I didn't really want to give it up so now I've got my own and I carry on doing laser cutting. For the control panel I'm going to be using some of this hardwood faced plywood. Um, this has been varnished with a floor varnish. Now I'm just going to mask and tape it off and I'll show you why a bit later on when we come to paint it. So that's in the laser cut machine. The next job is to level the bed so that we get the right focal length for the laser. So I've got this focal length gauge here, it's just a little piece of acrylic I've cut. Because the laser tube is water cooled, I need some nice cold cooling water for it. I don't have a chiller or anything like that, so I just use these frozen bottles of water and I put this in the circulation water just to keep the laser cool. Right, let's frame the work area, just so we know that our piece of ply in the right position. And similar case, a fresh start. I'm now going to spray this control panel with some black spray paint and that should really make the writing pop. And then we can take off this masking tape, give it a light sand over and a coat of lacquer. Cut this piece out of a separate section so it makes it 3D. And I'm going to spray paint this piece white. Whenever I do this overspraying with paint, I always get this leakage around the edges of lettering. So I use some fine sandpaper just to clean up all the edges. I'm just using some 240 grit sandpaper to clean this up. Now the edges are nice and crisp, I'm just going to spray it over with some clear lacquer. Here I have a dimmer for the lights. I've etched it out so I know where to put it. Um, and now I'm just going to screw it down. Six switches to go in. I went for these switches without the light on them. I don't really like those lights, they're a bit annoying. It's just personal preference. Next I want to stick my 3D Ford badge on here. 
So I'm just gonna get a little bit of PVA for that. Dip these letters in the glue. And then I'll place it where it needs to be. And we've got our water level gauge here. In this section of the video, I'm gonna do a little bit of show and tell and talk a little bit about this 50 watt laser cutter. Uh, for those of you that are interested, I know some of you have asked me questions in the comments, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about the machine and uh, what you can do with it. If you're not interested in this, that's totally fine. You can skip this part of the video if you want. So this machine, it's got a 50 watt laser tube in it. It comes with that as standard. Um, I haven't replaced the tube since I've had it and I've had it for about three years now. And it's had very light usage since I've had it. So um, it might be due a new laser tube soon. Uh, who knows, we'll see how it goes. But I've never overridden the laser tube and um, I've always kept on top of the maintenance of this machine. So it's well looked after. This machine's originally from eBay, but I bought it second hand from Gumtree. And the guy that I bought this off of was selling two of them. So I got a good deal for two machines. One was spares or repairs and then this one was in good working condition and it was fairly new as well, so he said. And I believe him because the laser tube lasted this long. So I originally had two machines. The spares or repairs one was uh, literally four spares. It was completely corroded inside and that's because the guy had used it for cutting vinyl records. So their business plan was to buy as many vinyl records as they could from charity shops and places like that cheap so 20p a record they would laser cut a nice design in it um, of a popular band or Harry Potter a big brand something like that and then they would sell them on a London stall mark up the price quite a lot to say over 20 pounds a record and people were buying them they were flying off the shelves and they made over a hundred thousand pounds with one of these machines so they say but I believe them I had all the record designs on the machine still, I've still got them now. Um, but they run into a bit of trouble when it came to copyright. Obviously you can't sell brands without their permission. It's really easy to run into copyright issues when you're selling laser cut items. And I think in this case, for the guy selling the vinyl records, one brand did take it further and shut the business down and then they couldn't do it anymore. And hence, I managed to buy these laser cutters. So not only was the copyright an issue, cutting vinyl records is also really toxic. When you laser cut, it essentially burns through the material and burning through vinyl produces hydrogen chloride gas. And then when that mixes with the oxygen in the air, that produces hydrochloric acid. I think that's right. Um, and that completely destroyed the machine. And he didn't sound too healthy either, you know, coughing and spluttering, where he'd probably been in the vicinity of the machine cutting and some of those gases leaking out. You don't want to be breathing that stuff in. So I only use this machine for cutting wood and acrylic, basically. They're the two main things. You can use it for etching glass and etching the paint off of metal, but you can't actually cut through metal or glass. This is a medium-sized hobby laser, if you like. 50 watt tube so it's good for cutting anything up to about six millimeter material and you can get a slightly smaller machine the k40 and that's pretty good as a starter laser cutter as well in my opinion it's a desktop laser cutter very similar to this but i think you have to use a different software because this machine has got a rudia controller it's quite versatile you can use um, different laser cutting softwares with it i use lightburn I have used RD Works before in the past, um, but Lightburn is much better. You do have to pay for it. And it's a one-off payment, not like with most softwares now. You have to pay every single year. I mean, even Word and stuff like that is 365 now, isn't it? You have to pay for it every single year if you want Word. It's a word processor. I mean, come on, what's wrong with the world? So the reality of owning a laser cutting machine is that it requires quite a bit of maintenance. You need to make sure that the mirrors and lens are kept clean. And for that, I use an isopropyl alcohol, a rubbing alcohol, 99.9% .9 alcohol. So it's good for keeping them mirrors clean and I use a little bit of cotton wool for that. Um, you don't want to touch the lens with your bare hands because you've got greases on your fingers. So I make sure I wear some disposable gloves whenever I'm cleaning the mirrors and lens. Once we've done that, we need to align the mirrors to make sure we've got the right focal point. We also need to lubricate the linear bearings, and for that, I use a silicone spray. So all of these 
runners here, um, the linear bearings need to be lubricated. On the cooling side, we've got a water pump, so that's something that could go wrong, um, just making sure that's kept nice and clean. Um, I use deionized water for the cooling water, and that's so we don't get mold and mildew growing in the laser tube, because that'll make the tube really inefficient. And for some reason, deionized water um, just stops that mold and mildew growing. If you use normal water, it, it tends to get this slimy substance and you get bacteria growing in it. Um, whereas, I guess you don't with deionized water. You also need to keep an eye on the temperature of that cooling water in the summertime. Add some ice in there or get a chiller for your machine um, as you don't want the laser tube to get too hot. And also in the winter time, you need to make sure that that water doesn't freeze inside the laser tube because it will make it break. So adding an antifreeze in the winter time is a good idea if it's going to be somewhere where it's really cold um, or make sure that the area is insulated. On a serious note, I'm going to be quick about this because we all know health and safety is quite boring. But on the safety side of things, you need to make sure that you've got good ventilation. You don't want to be breathing the smoke in, so make sure the extractor fan's working properly. Um, you've got an e-stop on the machine, so if you get any fires inside the machine, e-stop, have a fire extinguisher ready just in case. They do pose a fire risk, you're burning materials inside it, so make sure you have fire precautions in place, whether it be a fire blanket or just something to put out the fire. And never leave the machine unattended when you're laser cutting. And the final point is that the laser is really, really bright and it will damage your eyes if you keep staring at it. I know it's cool to look at, but maybe wear some sunglasses or something just to protect your eyes. I hope this section has given you a little bit of an insight into owning a laser cutting machine. Um, if you've got any questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best answering them or I can make a separate video uh, covering the topic if it's a popular topic. Um, anyway let's move on with installing the control panel. I need something to mount these um, control panels to now so I'm just going to make a frame for this to screw to. This is a frame that's going to go inside this cupboard um, but it doesn't fit made up which is a bit annoying so I'm going to have to make it up inside the cupboard. A framework's fixed inside the cupboard now so I'm going to bring all these wires through. Right then, it's time to deal with this mess. What I can do is simply get all of the negative ones, all the black ones, and put them into a buzz bar. And then it's simply a case of putting all the positive ones through a switch for each circuit. This is my cheap DIY version of a buzz bar. I'm just using a terminal block and linking all the terminals together to make a common terminal. And this is where I'm going to terminate all my negative cables. Now I'm going to strip all my negative cables back and put them in the negative buzz bar. And that deals with most of the wires in here. You can also get um, these automatic wire strippers, which makes things much quicker. Just put that in there, like that. Like that. So that's all my circuits wired up. We've got our negative buzz bar back here and then all our feeds to the switches, and then from the switches out to the appliances, uh, to the lights, diesel heater, water pump, 12 volt sockets, and a gas solenoid. I've also put a dimmer in there for the light switches and a water level sensor. I've got my two comms cables, my RJ45 control cables. I can plug one in to my solar charge controller there, and this one is for the inverter controller to turn the inverter on and off remotely from up here. So we plug that in, and now we can push this one back and screw this one in place. As you can see, they're all powered up now. We took a trip to Ikea to get some of these fake plants. I think they really add something uh, to an interior. Having a bit of greenery in here, so really pleased with those. Got some more as well to go up the back there, but I'll show you that in another video. I don't want to spoil the surprise. It's going to be like the Eden project in here. That's our control panel. Let's turn the lights on. So we've got our mood lights there. 
but I've lost a remote, unfortunately, so hopefully that turns up. Um, we've got our bedroom lights here, just two spotlights in the ceiling, and our kitchen counter lights there, just two spotlights. Over this end of the van, we've got our main lights, there's three spotlights there, and under counter lights there, and then the toilet light there. It's got this nice blue ring here, so you'll be able to find it easily at night time without turning all the other lights on. Diesel heater, that'll be down there once I get around to installing that. The water pump, that works, but it hasn't got any water in the system at the moment. 12 volt sockets, there and there. And we've got a gas solenoid here. So I can turn that on, turn on the 230 volt for the ignition to the cooker. And then we have gas here. No faffing around with matches here. Finally, the last switch is for the water level. So let's turn that on. We've got this nice red backlight. It looks great at night time. And then this water level sensor. Just move this down. And as the water level drops, it will show you on this. And then we've got a main dimmer for all the interior lights. Turn off the lights, turn them all off. And then you know everything is off from this point here all hidden away. Last of all, but certainly not least, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to everybody that supports the channel. I'm actually taken aback by some of the kind words and feedback that I've had from you guys, um, and it keeps me wanting to make more videos. So thank you for that, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Cheers guys, take care, bye for now.